Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab and the continuation of the Grand Receiver Restoration Series. Now I have a very important question for all of you today regarding the Grand Receiver Restoration Series, so don't skip ahead in this video because your response to this question may determine whether I keep going with this series or whether I just move on to other projects and just scrap the series. All right, so very important. On that same note, I'll come back to that in a moment. On the same note, in the previous video regarding that RCC radio, I asked all of you, would you like to see it restored? And in the comments, you left an overwhelming yes, please restore it. So because of your comments, you will now get to see the full restoration on that radio receiver. It is back into queue again, all right? And today we have three BC348s. All right, so one you can't see behind me here, but there's two off to the side that you can kind of see. Out of the three, I'm going to ask you which one you would like to see get restored, and we will use the other two as parts for that one. So we'll make one fantastic BC348 out of the three. And again, the whole goal of this series is to make these communications receivers perform the way they performed when they rolled off the factory line. So this receiver will perform like the RCA CR88, which was an 11 part series that ended in May. So there was 11 parts to that restoration. An incredible amount of work went into that, okay? Now that brings me back to the question to all of you. I wanna be producing videos that the majority of you are interested in. So your feedback today is very important. I'm going to use the amount of views I get on this video and also the amount of comments I get, yay or nay, basically yes or no, towards the Grand Receiver Restoration Series. And I'll use that to determine whether I'm gonna move forward with this or just move on to other projects. If you'd like to see other projects instead of the Grand Receiver Restoration Series, maybe modern electronics or whatever, leave that down below. All right, I would like to know your thoughts and just to you know where you are. Again, the reason I'm asking this is because you know, restoring these things is no, uh, you know, one day, two day job. It seems like nothing on camera because you'll get to watch an entire restoration in say an hour or an hour and a half. When really the amount of time behind the camera here is three weeks, maybe a month behind the camera for one restoration. So this is the reason that you will see me put in small radios in between. Okay, so I'll get a small radio or say I'll do a teardown on a power supply or I'll fix a power supply or work on a piece of test equipment or something like that. You'll see that in between. So basically I'm cleaning everything off this bench. When it's all taken apart and hooked up to test equipment, I'm in the middle of restoring it and I'll do another small uh, restoration. So all of you that are not interested in these will see that restoration and then I'll come back to this. I'll move that away and put all the rest of the stuff back on. This is all going on behind the scenes, the stuff that you don't see. All right, so an incredible amount of work. And the formula that I have found, or right, this is a little bit of inside information of uh, doing restorations on camera, is about basic, well, this is easier way of breaking it down. If I was to do a restoration and it took me one week with no camera rolling, all right, I'm doing it in the quietness of my own lab here and I'm just working on it and you know, I'm putting a week's worth of time into it, you know, lots of time every day working into it, put an entire week into it. The moment you turn a camera on, that turns into four times the amount. That's the rough figure. Sometimes it's a little more, all right? So I'll, I'll kind of be a little short on it, all right? So I'll, uh, I'll favor the, you know, the time here. So it could be five, sometimes it might be five weeks. So one week turns into a month as soon as I turn that camera on because I have editing, I have to do all the lighting work, move the camera around, I have to do all this kind of stuff. It immediately turns into four times the amount of work so one of these radio receivers here is going to be a multi-part series as well, obviously. You know, the whole idea of this channel is to convey as much electronics information to you as possible, whether it's on a modern power supply that has semiconductors in it, or whether it's on an old BC348, or whether it's on a Raquel RA17C12, or a Tektronix oscilloscope, or an Ammerland receiver, or whatever. What, no matter what it's on, the idea is to convey that information to you. So the more time I spend off camera trying to shorten the video up so that you know it keeps everybody's interest going, the less information I get to convey about that alignment or about the troubleshooting procedure or any of that to you, all right? So this is all the stuff that weighs out 
in my head as I'm putting these things together. So anyways, that's a little bit on the thought process. So you kind of get to see a little bit behind the scenes what's going on here. So after this radio receiver is done, all right, I'm committed to this now, right? We're going to choose one. I'm committed to this. Do you want to see the restoration of the other three radio receivers? So two are already done. This will be the third one, and then there'll be another three. There's a Hammerland SP600 in the lineup. There's a Raquel, and then there's a Collins radio in there as well. The Raquel and the Collins restorations are nothing short of a small car restoration on my end. The amount of time and effort to put into those radio receivers is incredible. So I want to make sure that your interest is there. I don't want to be producing videos that the majority of you may not be interested in. So again, your feedback is very important. Okay? So anyways, that's where I'm at with this restoration series. I want to just make sure everybody's good with everything. And if not, if you want to see me move on to other projects, let me know in the comments below as well. So I'll, again, I will gauge the views. I'll gauge your comments. So if you really want to see this you know, restoration series keep on going, like and share and promote this video so that lots of people get to see it. Because if I get lots and lots of views on this, obviously we know what the situation's going to be, right? I'll keep going with this and get into more in-depth restorations with these communications receivers as well. If you're just joining in now and you're wondering, what am I talking about? The whole idea is to restore all of these really neat old communications receivers, you know, World War II era and all that stuff and beyond, and put them all up here on this bench. Hopefully the bench will, you know, support all the weight because they're very heavy, especially the Raquel and the Collins and the SP600 and the AR88, <laughs> they're all incredibly heavy. So we're going to line them all up here and we're going to all tune them, I'll tune them all to a frequency and we'll switch from receiver to receiver to receiver and see how well it listens to that, to that signal coming in and we'll also listen to the sound quality. So we'll have a, a big comparison. I'll, I'm going to get out my, my uh, vacuum tube warm microphone and I will hook that all up here again and we'll get a very good idea of it. So that was the whole idea of this series. So uh, to put all of these up and just basically put them against each other and see which one wins for the best sound and the best receiving. So that was the whole idea of this particular series. And again, I want to make sure that you're all interested in actually seeing this because honestly, I haven't had a whole lot of feedback. And on the, or on the uh, RCA CR88, as I was going through the restoration series, I was watching the views go down. And then as soon as I came to the last video that shows it working, it spiked right up again. So it's showing me that throughout the video series, the actual interest in the series itself, in the troubleshooting and the tuning and all that, it was starting to dwindle. So why is that happening? So I need to find that out. I need to find out, are you just not interested in seeing the whole, you know, restoration series? Because if not, I'll skip a bunch of it. Let me know. All right. That's very, very important. All right, remember, you guys, all the subscribers on this channel are the reason this channel is where it is right now and the reason that it is growing. And since you guys are all the subscribers and you're all right into electronics like I am, you got to be pretty hardcore into electronics to be on this channel. So I'm, I'm all about electronics. And if you are too and you're not subscribed, you definitely should be. But at any rate, uh, that's what it's all about. It's this, this channel is just all about sharing as much information as I possibly can and uh, being as hardcore about electronics as I can. So anyways, enough of that. Leave your comments below. You know what to do. Anyways, let's get into these radio receivers right here. Choose the one and get going in this part of the Grand Receiver Restoration Series. Let's take a look at the physical condition of all three of these radio receivers and choose the one that has the best outward condition. It, at least we know what face plate or what case we can use on the chassis that we choose. So we'll take a look at the, the faces first here. Uh, this one here, out of the three of them, which you see here, has got a bunch of holes here drilled for some switches that definitely don't look factory. The way you can tell if they're factory, of course, is they would have some writing beside, you know, to tell you what the function of the switch was. There's no writing here, no writing here. So this one is nice enough, you know, this is nicely done so that you might think that it's, you know, somewhat factory. It even looks like the other toggle down here, but this one is just right out of nowhere and it's loose, right? So somebody's taken, this is a, you know, a three position switch. So you have a handle that flips from AVC to off to manual voltage control here. Somebody's put a VR in here 
Whereas on the other receivers, you have the, uh, the toilet flusher handle right here, right? That allows you to flip to each position. So, yeah, a little bit of modification here. Now, you got to keep in mind that, you know, these have been around for a long time and so many magazines way back in the day put out, you know, ham radio magazines, put out modifications for these things to try and improve their, you know, their listening and this, that, and the other. And every ham operator's had their hands in these things trying to make them better, right? Well, they were fantastic from the get-go. And, of course, all of these, you know, mods that you could do to the BC-348 were just really marginal. So uh, not even worth tampering with. But, you know, of course, being a ham radio operator, you know, it was fun for them. They gave them something to do and to tinker with. But unfortunately, you get butchered up face panels like this and, you know, people doing all sorts of silly things. Nice big scratch there. So other than these two holes, you know, the, the face itself isn't in bad condition. Like, you know, you could put some caps in here or something like that and uh, maybe disguise that up. So not too bad, you know, and uh, let's see, this turns okay. Yeah, it's working okay. No problems there. So this is the next one right here. So this one here, when I purchased it a long, long time ago, it worked just fine. So somebody had spent some time in this, and this has been modified over time. Uh, you can see there is basically no butchering on the front panel whatsoever. It's nice and clean. The only thing that's tampered with is the case. You can see the holes that they drilled here, and that's because they've added an internal power supply into this thing. So that's, um, they've also done that with this one here. You can see the transformer right over here. We'll talk about the internals here in a moment and all that stuff. So it was a very common thing to drill holes in the case to allow the power supply to vent because these things were completely sealed. They got really hot, right? So not a problem when you're flying way, 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 way up in the sky. Things are nice and cool. But when you want to run these things on the ground, they tend to warm up a little bit. So drilling of the holes is a big thing to allow some venting. The face on this one is, uh, I would say, probably, well, I don't know, a little bit more butchered up than the rest of them. The case sure is nice on this one. It's, the case on this is, you know, it's gray, but it looks flawless. So a quarter-inch jack is missing here, or as you can see on this one, they're still here, right? You know, they have a little protection there to keep dirt out of them. So this is missing over here. Somebody's drilled a hole and added this here. They've removed the knob and they've put a toggle in up here. So you can see on this one here, it's, you know, it's got this switch that goes click, click back and forth. And of course, no hole drilled here, right? So the face on this one is pretty butchered up. Uh, they've done something down here with the antenna posts. They put a B and C on the front here, and they've just left this big, ugly, gaping hole. So it looks like somebody had actually put a square tab on here at one time to maybe disguise this to make it look better. So I don't know if you can see that from here. I'll zoom in on that. Let's, uh, Pretty bad butchery going on down there. Look at that. So somebody looks like they, you can see the dirt outline of possibly a square tab. So I would say this one here is probably for physical condition the worst, right? So let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm thinking that uh, for outward appearance, for the face wise, at least this one here is probably the best. And uh, um, so let's take a look at the insides of these things now. So you can see in this one here that they've added a power transformer, a little power supply down here, and they've done a very nice job. So whether this was some sort of professional conversion, let's move this over here, is, um, yeah, it looks very, very well done. You know, power transformer and reactor down here, and it has a rectifier tube. That's kind of a cute little chassis there. So depending on the other one's power supplies, maybe we'll remove this one and put it into that if we don't use this chassis, or maybe we'll even use this chassis. I don't know what's going on yet. So all the tubes are in here. It's populated. The shields on the tops of uh, these cans over here are all missing. And I'll just uh, prop this up here so we can take a better look at this. I'll grab some solder rolls. Maybe that'll work. Will it work without falling and going kerplunk on the desk. So you can see the tubes in the front here, and we have this tube here. Gas, gaseous type regulation going on, it looks to be, possibly. So, yeah, it's fully populated with tubes. It's all looking okay, you know, very dirty inside. So we have a tube down here, 
one here, one here, one here. We have two over here. We have three over here with this, this, which is, I believe, a regulator. One in the box over here. And let's see what's happening on the bottom side of this one. Oh, somebody's added a tube on the bottom here. So we can already see that this one here has been, all the shielding is on the bottom. It's a nice tuning cap in here. That moving around. Lots and lots of turns there. Wow. So anyways, you can see uh, this has got a tube added in the bottom. Zoom into the, the tube. I don't even know what the tube is. It's kind of cute. Somebody's added the socket in here. What this does, I have no idea. Again, you know, where's the thought here, right? This, you know, basically rubbing the, the vacuum tube. So what is it? Made for Westinghouse, 9002. So, 9002, is that a triode? Possibly. Triode or diode. I'd have to look that up. 9002. So, interesting. Always interesting to see how people's mods work. So you can see most of the, you know, caps are ancient in this, so they would all need to go. You know, this one here, this here, here, down here. These are all caps. They all need to be replaced. Fuse up here, it's gone green. You can see that. Green fuse going on there. Lots of uh, stuff, modifications here, there, and everywhere. As I say, you know, ham radio operators, right? They get their hands in these things and, and modify them. This is, these were, you know, a real chosen radio receiver for ham radio operators in the day. And of course, shortwave listeners too, you know, experimenters. Anybody could have had their hands in these things, but, you know, you can really see. Lots of uh, lots of stuff has been added here. Terminal tie strips and four-pin tube sockets and <laughs> everything. So let's get this one apart. So I'll move this out of the way. i got to be careful I don't scrape the uh, bench top. I'll just put this one over here for a moment. And uh, let's see what's inside this one here. See if I can get the case off of this without too much difficulty. Cord over here. That one has a nice old radio smell to it. Nice soft mat here, so I'm not too worried about laying it on its face. You got to be careful with that kind of stuff if you don't have a soft mat, because you'll either destroy the radio's face or you'll destroy your desk. Oh, look at that. Yeah, somebody's definitely added some mods to this. No scratching. Look at this. Wow. Okay, so let's get a closer look at this. What's going on on the underside of this one? So we've got some new caps. Well, not new, but, you know, newer caps. You see that there? Newer caps. Uh, these resistors look pretty burnt up. Somebody has added a power supply in here with a nice big transformer. A cap hanging out in the breeze over here. Cap down here, that looks like one of my caps. I got a bunch of these. They're pretty popular around here for a while. Another one down here. So there's one electronic store locally that sold these. And um, so pretty much know where they came from. Well, anyways, that's the only stock I've ever seen on them locally. So, at any rate, yeah, two of those in there. And, uh, yeah, another fuse here. This one looks not so green. Not looking too bad. Let's take a look at this. All the shielding is here on this one. Oh, all the shielding is on this one as well. Look at this. This one is looking really nice. The little platform is very professionally done. I'm not sure I like that power supply though, because I don't think it has a choke. I would have to look a little further into that. So yeah, look at that. Nice and clean. Doesn't look as busy as the other one, does it? The other one looks like it's much more busy when you compare them side by side. Yeah, here we have all the tubes over here. 6v6, this one here says. So very interesting. Sure has that nice radio smell to it. When you open this up, it really gives you that nostalgic 
old radio room smell. I'm sure when this thing is glowing and it's on, I bet you this is just, I don't know, for any of you that own these older radios and run these radio communications receivers, they just have this awesome smell when they're running. It just, it's, it's a really, I don't know, it's just a neat comforting smell when you're running these radios. It just gives you a very nostalgic feeling. Looks like somebody may have added a choke down here instead of putting it on the top possibly, or is that an audio transformer? Oh, no, it's got windings on the other side. Probably an audio transformer. So maybe somebody's tried to do away with a choke. I like the power supply in this one better. Uh, this one here looks much cleaner and easier to work on than this other one over here. So I'll turn this around so we can see the top side. Well, first of all, if you look at the bottom side, you compare this, how nice and open this is, to that down there. Wow. You know, that's really busy down there, like very, very crazy busy in there. A little area to work with in here, whereas this is just absolutely all open. So I imagine that this is probably a more modern design, this one here. So, yeah, and then of course on the top side, if we look at the top side here, you know, we can see with the, the tubes on the bottom here, how busy this is down in this area here. I'll just lay this down so that we can compare them both. Turn this one up the other way as well, so that they're both kind of looking the same way. Okay, so you can see how busy that one is versus this one. It's like, wow, that's so much cleaner. You know, this one is very busy inside. So it'd be very interesting to compare the schematics. We'll do that. In part two, we'll take a look at the schematics and we'll compare them and also get an idea of uh, maybe which one may be the better inside. So far, I'm really liking this one here. It's just a cleaner design, probably a bit more modern. I like this power supply much better, right? It's got the choke, right? Which is a definite bonus, you know? Whereas this one doesn't have that, so. So that's those two, quite a difference, you know, same type of receiver, BC348, you know, and and uh, be very interesting. There's you know, three grid caps on this one, you know, so we have three grid caps here. Whereas on this one here, we have no grid caps on these at all. Very interesting. So whether it's been modded or whether somebody's done something, who knows? All right, so, so far, you know, I'm, I'm really liking this one, but I, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe this one here may be a better receiver. May have more stages in it. I don't know what's going on with this one here. So we'll definitely have to look at schematics. Okay, I'll grab the third one here. It looks like the case is just, it's not even screwed down. It doesn't even look like. I'll see if it just pops off. It does. This one here wasn't even screwed on. Let me just get this thing off here so I can get it onto the bench and just get rid of that case. Case is in nice condition on this one. Like, I mean, there's no holes drilled on this. You see this? So there's, you know, absolutely no holes. So that's a nice case. If that was painted black, I'm sure that would, you know, you know, fingers included. So, uh, yeah, it looks really nice. Possible. Wow, this might be a real mix of all three receivers, huh? Just down on the floor here. Yeah, let's take, oh, this one here is butchered. This one here is really bad. Look at this one. No power supply, nothing in there. Maybe the dynamotor went missing. This one here is the same design, though. So you look down here, we have the gl one glass tube here, and we have these two with no caps on them. And that's the same si kind of design as this one right here, right? Glass tube, no caps, and, um, you know, very few transformers, whereas this other one is just loaded with them. This one here is just, you know, they're all over the place. It'll be very interesting to see the difference. You know, very, very interesting to see the difference. Now, I know that this must be an older version because, you know, we have the grid caps on these, right? So, whereas these ones, none of them have the grid caps. They're all just, as you can see here, right? They're all the, you know, the SK and 
you know that particular line whereas you you have a 6 6k7 and then of course you have you know the one without the cap which is the 6sk7 right and so on and so forth so yeah very interesting this also doesn't look like it has any regulation on here so you can see here unless they put it somewhere else it just looks like they've got the three tubes here whereas on this one here it looks like they've actually added some form of regulation here so whether you know this is a more stable design or not might be kind of interesting i don't think this is a dial light control it looks like a variable cap so i don't know what's going on there this is dial light on the front but this is a capacitor so somebody has maybe done a modification there it looks like possibly right so these this one here has the switch for the dial lights right and this one here has a VR for the dial lights you can dim them to whatever level I guess you feel so that is the three receivers. Uh, this one here on the bottom side, of course, is going to be butchered up. And look at all this. Wires all cut everywhere down here. You see that? You can't. There you go. So you can see all these wires just... Look at this. We labeled them a little bit. Some sort of coupling in here. That is known as a gimmick. That is a type of capacitor known as a gimmick and you see this wrapped around here like this they're making a picofarad value capacitor down here Let's zoom into that a little more so whenever you open a receiver you'll notice this in the bfo section quite a bit you'll see this they'll try to couple in you know to an if transformer leg or something like that and they'll put a few turns of wire around it that is a gimmick so there you go yeah, so, so this one's out, definitely. Parts for this one, definitely. Uh, so, so this one is, would be internally, definitely parts. So, so far, honestly, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking the same thing. This is the nicest looking one right here. And, of course, this has got the nicest looking power supply in it, so this should probably go into this one here. And um, I'm not sure about the RF stages, though. This might have an extra RF stage or something going on in here, you know, right? So the tube count in this one is, let's see, so we got, without excluding the little regulator here, let's back this out a little. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine tubes, all right, in, uh, excluding this uh, regulator here. So on this one here, we've got one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine so same tube count same tube count maybe they just move things around that looks interesting down there almost looks like a piece of pc board or something let's see if this one's got the same thing yeah it does so this one here's got the same thing down on the bottom down there see that little piece of pc board kind of material down there looks like wafer board so that's the three receivers. So all three of them here. So tell me what you think. I'll let you know what I think, you know, and um, maybe you have some other ideas as well. So most likely this is the cleanest, in internal and external, and um, doesn't have, it's not so busy, you know, I guess you could say chassis-wise with all the IF transformers or whatever those are down there. Uh, yeah, just a different design. Just a different design completely down here, eh? So, I guess we should probably take a look at the schematics here. So what I'll do is I'll dig some schematics up and in part two, before we get going with these things, uh, we'll take a look at some schematics and see which one. Maybe this one with all the coils might be better, might be a better performer. I'm not sure. So, I know this one here worked when I got it and it performs like crazy. So, you know, I've never compared these two. So this is new to me as well. 
So we would find out which one actually is uh, the better performer just by the schematics and, and everything else. Maybe this one here has some special option in it, I don't know. Was a special option or something like that, because these two are matched. So these two are very much the same. Completely different down here. And here too, right? No glass tube. Right? This looks like an audio output tube. It is a 6v6. Somebody's marked 6v6. And this is the same down here, right? So it looks like they've moved the audio output tube up here from down on the chassis, whereas down here it looks like the audio output tube is here. So, interesting. All right, let me know what you think. Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3. And let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll get going on this thing in the next episode. That would be part two. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this video involving the BC348 communications receivers. We'll call this part one. If you are enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. And definitely don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel and leave a comment below. Remember, your comment may very well determine whether I keep going with this receiver restoration series or whether I scrap it. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. It's a great place to be. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.